Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate both the arc length as well as the area of a sector. My starting point is a circle, okay, so if I try and draw a decent circle, there we go, and I'll place the center right here. Now the first thing I need to get out of the way really is to properly define what an arc is as well as what a sector is. And to do that, I'm going to start by placing two points at the circumference of my circle, like so. Now if I join the center of the circle to each of those two points, yeah, something looking like that, this actually splits this circle into two sectors. We have one here, looks a bit like a slice of pizza, and a bigger one here. Now each of those, each of those two sectors has a name. The small one, so this guy here, this is known as the minor sector, minor sector, and the bigger one, let me just get a nice color here, that should do, the bigger one here, this is known as the major sector, okay? Now, so all a sector actually is, uh, really, I like to just think of it as a slice of pizza. It's a part of, this, of the circle that's been cut out uh, by joining the center to two points of the circumference. Okay, what's important though is that the starting point has to be the center of the circle for it to be a sector. But I think just from my drawing, you probably gathered that. Okay, so that's a sector. The next thing I want to quickly define is what an arc is. And so given a sector, like either one of the two sectors we have here, an arc is a portion of the circumference. Remember, the circumference is the full turn around the circle. Okay, and so one of the arcs could be this one right here. Okay, that would be an arc. Now, you can probably guess that arc also has a name and it's known as the minor arc. In a similar way, I've got an arc around the bigger sector. Okay, so it's just a portion of the circumference. Okay, and this guy, again, you could probably guess, this guy is known as the major arc. Okay, so what we're going to be learning how to do in this video is, first of all, how to calculate the arc length of a sector. And, and so that could be, sorry, that could be an arc like the minor arc or like the major arc. The method will be the same for both. But we're also going to learn how to calculate the area of each of these sectors. Again, doesn't matter if it's a minor sector or a major sector, the method and formula are the same. All right, so to learn the method, I'll quickly draw another circle at least our attempt to do something decent like that. And once more, I'm going to place my center here and I'll create my sector like so. Okay. Now to give this some sort of numbers here, I'll say that the angle here, okay, we say that this is the angle subtended by this arc. Subtended is, is just, sorry, subtended is just a very fancy and dare I say annoying way to say formed. So this is the angle formed by this arc. Uh, I'll say that that angle there is 80 degrees, okay? I'll also say that this circle has a radius of 7 centimeters. All right, now what if I were to ask you, what's the length of this arc? How do, we, how do you think we can calculate that? Well, the thing to notice here uh, is, or the thing to pick up on, is the fact that an arc is nothing more than a fraction of the full circumference, okay? And we know the formula for the circumference of a circle, right? We've seen that several times before. The formula for the circumference, which I'll call capital C, uh, the formula for the circumference or perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r, right? And I know you've seen that before, and I'll just box that, and underneath I'll say circumference circumference of a circle, of a circle. Okay, so nothing, nothing new there really. Okay, so since this arc is a fraction of the circumference, well, presumably, I'll be able to calculate the length of this arc by calculating a fraction of 2 pi r. And in fact, that's exactly how we're going to do this. If I call this arc L, in other words, the length of that arc is L, then the fraction of the circumference that L represents will in fact just be the fraction 
of 360 that 80 represents. Here's what I mean. The angle here is 80 degrees. The full angle, if I go all the way around the circle, is 360 degrees. So presumably, and in fact it is, the arc length here is in fact 80 360ths of the full circumference. And that sounds a bit complicated. If I write it down, I think it'll make more sense. This length L is just equal to 80 over 360 times 2 pi r, where, to be clear, 2 pi r is just the full circumference of the circle. So when I write this, 80 over 360, I'm just figuring out what fraction of the full turn 80 degrees represents. And that's it. That's the formula. Now, <clears throat> for this particular arc, uh, you know, with the radius of 7 centimeters and this angle of 80, I can calculate this length simply by replacing this r here by 7. And in fact, I'll do that, okay? I'll say, okay, well, that's, uh, you know, that's 80 over 360. I'm, I'm deliberately not simplifying fractions here, by the way. Uh, 2 pi times r, which is 7. And at this stage, all I need to do is plug all of that inside my calculator. And you can go ahead and check, but with my calculator, if I do that, I'm getting 9.77. Okay, and that's the answer, 9.77 centimeters, where I've rounded my answer to three significant figures. What's nice about this is that we can generalize the method we just used to actually derive a formula. Okay, so in fact, I'll, I'll write that here, right in the middle. I'll say formula, the formula here, formula for arc length. Okay, there we go. I'll just underline that, perfect. Now, if I draw a sector, and I'm drawing, you know, I'm drawing a sort of minor sector here, and I could draw a major sector, right? The formula would be the same. Uh, let's say the angle inside the th sector is theta, and the radius is r. Then the arc length, right, this length here, which again we, we typically call L, is given by the formula L equals to the fraction of 360 that theta represents, which sounds way too complicated, by the way. Uh, that's just equal to theta over 360 times the circumference of the full circle, so times... 2 pi r. That's the formula. Now, I want to go as far as saying, you know, I wouldn't expect anyone to try and memorize this formula, because hopefully, provided you understand that all I'm doing is fr figuring out the fraction of 360 degrees that 80 represents, or that any angle theta represents, all you really need to know is the formula for the circumference of a circle, which normally you already know. Okay, so that formula is you know what you need to be able to find ideally on your own. If you can't, don't worry, you, you can always memorize this, but I would aim towards understanding how I get this formula. Okay, now just to show you, before I move on to calculating the area, uh, the area of this arc, let me just quickly show you that I can use this formula here to calculate the, the length of the major, seg sorry, the major arc that I have here. Okay, just to be clear, I'll, I'll highlight that one in blue. I'm going to calculate this length, the longer arc around the circle, okay? All right, now, using the same formula, I can say that L is equal to, uh, let's see, I need theta, right? I need theta. That's got to be the angle that's subtended by this arc. Well, in this case, that angle would be this guy here, right? And although we don't have it right away, we can figure it out because uh, all the angles at the center of the circle here have to add up to 360 degrees. Since this angle here is 80, the angle we're trying to find here has to be 360 minus 80. And of course, 360 minus 80, well, that's, you know, that's 280 degrees. Okay, so going back to our formula, <coughs> excuse me, going back to our formula here, right down here in the left-hand corner, uh, and using the formula that I have here, I can state that the length of that uh, major arc is 280 over 360 times 2 pi times 7. Remember, 7 was the radius. And at this stage, all we have to do is plug all of that in the calculator, and <clears throat> unless I'm mistaken, I'm getting, and rounding to three significant figures, I'm getting L equals to 34 
34.2 centimeters. Okay, that's the longer arc length we have there. Okay, now at this stage, hopefully, you now know how to calculate an arc length. And with any luck, you found that quite intuitive. Let's now look at how to calculate the area of a sector. Okay, and, and don't worry, the, the, the reasoning is actually quite similar. So for that, I'll draw another, I'll start by drawing another circle again, right? Something looking like this. And once more, I'll place my point at the center and I'll create a sector. So something like that, okay? I'll go ahead and say that the angle, uh, the angle here, right? The angle that's being subtended by this arc, the angle inside the sector, this time I'll say, I'll say that that's 70 degrees, okay? And I'll say that the radius is five centimeters. Just can't see that very well, can we? Hang on, let me let me do a slightly better job at writing that. That's five centimeters, okay? All right, now, the area I'm trying to calculate, just to hopefully, hopefully this is clear, I wanna figure out how to calculate this area that I'm highlighting right now, okay? That's what we're trying to find here. Okay, so the, it'll have units of area, so typically in this case it will be square centimeters, and we need, we need that area. Like I said though, the reasoning is very similar to what I just did. The area of this sector, you may notice, is a fraction of the area of the entire disk, right? And we know the area of a circle, which, sorry, I'll say area of a disk, uh, we know the area, and we've seen that before, the area, which I'll write up here, the area of a disk is equal to pi r squared, okay? I'll box that one as well at the top here. That's the area, area of a disk, okay? Now, we've got the area of a disk, and what I just said a second ago, or a minute ago, I should say, is that the area of this sector is a fraction of the total area of the disk. And so the question becomes, what's the fraction? Well, the fraction we find in exactly the same way as what we did for the arc length. Here the angle is 70 degrees. And that's a fraction of 360 degrees, okay? And in fact, this area will be equal to 70 360ths of the area of the disk, all right? In other words, the area that we have here, if I actually write, actually write that out, the area that we have here, and I'll write A like this, is gonna be 70, that, that was the angle, over 360 times pi r squared, okay? And so once more, before I even carry on, what you are hopefully picking up on is the fact that all you really needed to know here was the area of a disk. Beyond that, it's just a matter of figuring out what fraction of the disk this sector represents, okay? <clears throat> now, if I replace r by its value, which is 5, uh, that quickly leads us to uh, this area being equal to 70 over 360 times pi times 5 squared. And at this stage, we just plug all of that in the calculator, and in doing so, let me see what I find. And I'm getting, if I round to three significant figures, I'm getting 15, 15.3 square centimeters, right? That's the answer, okay? Now, I could actually do the same thing, right? I could use the same formula and calculate the area of the major sector. The method would be identical. The only difference would be I'd replace, instead of having 70 on the numerator, I'd have the angle outside here, right, which would be 290 degrees, since this one is 70, okay? And that's it. Well, we can generalize this method, right, we, just as I did for the arc length. I can generalize the method I just used here and come up with a formula. And so I'll do that here in yellow again. So the formula, formula for the area, formula area, area of a sector, sector. Let's see, and I'll just underline all that. There we go. And I'll illustrate that, of course. So I'll just come up with a very generic sector here. Radius r, angle theta. The area a will be equal to theta divided by 360, so theta over 360, 
remember, that corresponds to figuring out what fraction of the disk we're dealing with, okay, times the area of a disk. So times pi r squared. That's the formula. Okay, so to finish this, you know, I'll just quickly throw one more example at you, and then, then we're done. And so I'll just, you know, draw a very, I'll write, sorry, I should write example here just to make things as clear as I can. Uh, and I'll just quickly draw a sector looking something like that, okay? Sorry, I can tell just by looking at that the, the radius here is shorter than the one here, but, you know, bear with me. I'm doing what I can here with this uh, this smaller tablet here. So I'll say that this angle here is, well, let's see, I'll say that's 100 and 110 degrees. And I'll say that the radius here is, hmm, let me think, I'll just say, I'll tell you what, I'll just say 8 centimeters, okay? And again, we need to find the, the two things that we've learned about in this video, okay? So we need to find the arc length for this sector, and we need to find this sector's area. All right, so I'll start with the arc length. Yeah, so the arc length, which remember, I'm sort of drawing aside right now, and I'll go ahead and call that length, call it L. And for that, all I need is this formula, okay? That's all I actually need. So if I plug, and actually, I'll tell you what, I'll copy that formula at the top, right, just so you can see it. It's theta over 360 times 2 pi r, right? So remember, this theta over 360 tells us which fraction of the full circle we're actually dealing with here, yeah? So in this case, it's the, the theta is 110, so I'll replace theta by 110. The radius is 8, so I'll replace r by 8 inside that formula, okay? Doing so, and I'll do it, sorry, I'll do this underneath now, I'll move over here. Doing so leads us to the arc length L is equal to 110 over 360 times uh, 2 pi times r, so times 8. All right? Now, of course, I could, you know, I could calculate all of that. I could multiply the 110 times 2 pi times 8, put all that on the numerator, and simplify as much as possible with the denominator. But, you know, honestly, at this stage, I am just assuming that we have access to a calculator here, okay? And so, you know, like I like to say, don't be a hero, okay? If this is an exam, plug all of this inside your calculator and, you know, round your answer if needs be. So let's see, if I do that, I find that L, L has to be equal to 15.4, 15.4 square centimeters. Oops, sorry, what am I talking about? 15.4 centimeters, centimeters, let me get rid of that, that power of two there, there we go, with my tiny, tiny eraser here, done, okay, so that would be the arc length, right, I'll just underline that, there we go, the next thing I need to do, as I said, I'm going to calculate the area of this sector, all right, now the area of the sector, well, for that, I turn to my second formula here, um, again, maybe at this stage, you don't actually need the formula, and you've understood the method, right, because, remember, for the area of the sector, I just need to figure out which fraction of the full disk this sector represents. Once I know that, I simply have to multiply the area of a disk, so pi r squared, by that fraction, all right? So here, if I do that, let's see, um, you know, and I'll, I'll start by writing the formula here. So the area, my, my area would be area equals to, you know, it's theta over 360 times pi r squared, all right? Uh, but this time, you know, theta is, of course, 110, r is still 8. So replacing those two things by their respective values, that leads us to 110 over 360 times pi times 8 squared. Now, again, I throw all of that in my calculator, right? I just, and once more, I'll round to three significant figures. You're probably so sick of hearing me say that. Uh, the area is 61.4 square centimeters, okay? And there we go. And so that's it, everyone. I mean, that's how we can calculate the arc length as well as the area of a sector. And that's it for this tutorial.